for the sake of today and probably in your classroom, you can purchase an entire bag of corn husk already peeled. If you want to use it fresh, um, as soon as you peel it, you can start doing what I'm about to do. Um, when you get this package stuff, it's going to be nice wide leaves like these. You're going to tear that immediately into strips about this wide. Once you have these nice wide strips, I'm going to start with six. I'm going to use this little thin one as a string. And the first step is tying those six strips together. I use the pointy ends. This is pretty simple, pretty basic, but this is something I've found can be easily done with smaller hands and younger minds. This here is step number one completed. I've just tied all six of these husks together at the pointy tips. A uh, little tug just to make sure that knot's tight enough because obviously we don't want this to fall apart halfway through. Right now I got half on one side of my finger, half on the other. This is where it gets tricky trying to teach the kids how to turn it inside out. Basically you want to hide the knot for step number two. Um, if you can't just flip one side over like I just did, you can actually grab these tips, turn the whole thing upside down and peel it like a banana. Whatever you got to do to hide that knot, some of these trouble pesky long strings may stick out. Try and tuck those in as best you can. But once you're satisfied that your knot is hidden, you will use another strip, another thin strand, very thin yet very durable. And you will tie once again. You're going to make this knot probably about an inch, maybe an inch and a half down, because you're creating the head and the neck as you're making this second knot. Um, so this is where you're starting to get specific with how they want their action figure or doll to look. If you have one of these body strips left, um, you can tear that in half. For children who are in Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, maybe even the Girl Scouts, uh, you can get three strips and braid the arms. Instead of having both pointy ends on the same side, that would give me lopsided arms. So I'm going to turn them around and balance them out by having the pointy ends in opposite directions. And again, this is another troublesome step. I think it's become easy for me having made these for 30 or some odd years. But um, twisting the two together makes it a little easier for me to form the knot with the husk itself. And while the knot is still loose, I will use, I'll slide the knot to tighten it and usually that'll allow me to get that knot right at the very, very end of the husk. And that will symbolize one hand, one arm, one fist. Okay. So obviously to balance that out on the other side, we're just going to flip it over and I'll be able to demonstrate that one more time since it was a little tricky. Um, twisting it a little bit allows me to make the loop, tuck my end in to create the knot. And without pulling it, you can see if I pulled it, it would be right in the middle. So while it's loose, I'm going to slide it out to the, as close to the end as possible. Scissors, you can trim anything like that. You can trim some of these unsightly strings afterwards. Once you find the middle, as we did before, but once you have your arms, whether they're braided or whether they're just two strips, you can put them in there as best you can, um, securing them in the body by also creating a waistline. If you were making a female doll, um, this would be complete once you tied her waistline, once you made her if you wanted legs or you wanted pants on your action figure, um, it's as simple as tearing that bottom section into two equal halves to represent two equal legs. If you chose to do that, you would need two additional ties. And that pretty much is where I usually leave off um, the students. Uh, this is an activity that I normally sit down with the children and walk them through while we're in the classroom when I visit. Um, it helps them to hopefully retain some of the knowledge because I'm hoping that every time they look at this on their bookshelf or whatever at home, they'll remember me, hopefully the good times we shared, and, and more importantly, some of the information that was conveyed. I always encourage the children to go home and share this information with their parents. You know, how great and proud would the child be bringing home this action figure like, hey, I made this with my own hands from Cornhusk. I'm not throwing away the Cornhusk next year. Um, so hopefully that will be a, a hit at the next cookout um, when you're peeling all that corn on the cob. But I also tell the children that, you know, you cannot put a face on these. Um, I explain that you can paint them in so many different ways. You can use markers or you can use the traditional paint, um, crushing ochre and minerals to make paint. Um, tattoos, we did do, and if you wanted to just put a pen tattoo on the, ta on the doll or action figure, that's appropriate. If you had old pants at home and you wanted to cut up some jeans, make their own uh, Levi's and some Nike sneakers, that's fine. You can cut up a pizza box, make an iPod, It's great. This action figure was made in 2008, so 
We're not trying to act like it's traditional, but some kids do want to go out and find sticks to make weapons and use leaves to make their clothes. So there's lots of ways to accessorize when you're done getting to this stage, but we always encourage the teachers and even the students, obviously, please do not put a face on them. Um, this is not just a Wampanoag tradition. Corn started thousands of years ago in the Southwest. Um, when it was created there, um, we have creation stories about how the crow brought it out here to us. Um, and we teach those stories, but we also teach the children they should not put a face on the doll. There's a cool part of that. The doll can be anything you want it to be on any given day. Some day it can be Judy, the other day it could be Anawan. Either way, it can change its identity. Um, but this is not a Wampanoag belief, like I said. That every tribe that I've come across who has made corn husk action figures, I've always asked them how they believe about the face, and they always answer the same as we do, that they were never intended to have faces. I simply try to tell the children, you know, it's a respect issue. You know, it's something that the culture doesn't do. We're asking you kindly not to do it. Obviously, in school, I know we promote a lot about respect, um, taking your hat off maybe, um, you know, standing for the Pledge of Allegiance is a sign of respect for certain people. Um, so it's a simple respect issue that it's a belief that we should not do that and we would appreciate it if you wouldn't. So a lot of the kids, they seem very open and receptive. Okay. <laughs>